In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Uh, we come to the Thursday of the seventh week of Easter, and um, I celebrate this Mass with my uh, parishioners, of course, uh, at a distance in their homes of Grange, Milnthorpe, and Arnside. This Mass is broadcasted from St. Charles in Grange. However, uh, the intention of the Mass today is for our benefactors and for those of the uh, parish that includes Our Lady of Lords, Arnside, and Christ the King, Milthorpe, for their benefactors, whom we should always remember. The first reading of the Sacred Mass from the Acts of the Apostles, the story of the early church, shows that Paul is yet again in trouble but he's yet again in trouble because he proclaims loudly the resurrection of Christ and our resurrection. And believe it or not, that's something that will get you into a lot of trouble today. So many people are convinced that there is nothing, nothing to hope for, no future. Let's proudly proclaim the fact of Christ's resurrection and his promise to take us with him at our deaths in a natural way. We call to mind our sins and uh, perhaps uh, we ask for greater hope and purpose in living our faith. We have a great future. Lord Jesus, you were lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord, have mercy. You shouldered the cross to bear our suffering and sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. You opened for your people the way from death into life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your spirit, O Lord, we pray, imbue us powerfully with spiritual gifts that he may give us a mind pleasing to you and graciously conform us to your will through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Since the Tribune wanted to know what precise charges the Jews were bringing against Paul, he freed him and gave orders for a meeting of the chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin. Then he, put, he brought Paul down and stood him in front of them. Now Paul was well aware that one section was made up of Sadducees and the other of Pharisees, so he called out in the Sanhedrin, brothers, I am a Pharisee and the son of Pharisees. It is for our hope in the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial. As soon as he said this, a dispute broke out between Pharisees and Sadducees, and the assembly was split between the two parties. For the Sadducees say there is neither resurrection, nor angel, nor spirit, while the Pharisees accept all three. The shouting grew louder and some of the scribes from the Pharisees' party stood up and protested strongly. We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit has spoken to him, or an angel. Feeling was running high, and the tribune, afraid that he would, they would tear Paul to pieces, ordered his troops to go down and haul him out and bring him into the fortress. Next night, the Lord appeared to him and said, Courage, you've borne witness for me in Jerusalem. Now you must do the same in Rome. The Word of the Lord. The response. Preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. Preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself 
who are my prize. Preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight. Since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. Preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad. Even my body shall rest in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let you, your beloved know decay. Preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, at your right hand happiness for ever. Preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. With me in them and you in me, may they be so completely one that the world will realise that it was you who sent me, says the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Holy Father, I pray not only for these, but for those also who through their words will believe in me. May they all be one. Father, may they be one in us, as you are in me and I am in you, so that the world may believe it was you who sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. With me in them and you in me, may they be so completely one that the world will realise it was you who sent me, and that I have loved them as much as you love me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am, so that they may always see the glory you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Father, righteous one, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you have sent me. I have made your name known to them and will continue to make it known so that the love with which you loved me may be in them and so that I may be in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus prayed for unity of heart and mind and he said and this is the difficulty with us he said by your unity your thinking as one body of Christ you will make an impression on the world and tell people about me we don't do that very well we need to work at it hard but let's look at it the other way God invites us into the family of the Trinity. God wants to welcome us there. Jesus says, I want them with me where we are. So it's a great yearning and promise of God for us, however small we might be. God wants us to be with him. And we do that, of course, by struggling to keep unity, by struggling to keep unity with God in heart and mind, and also morally, of course, by coming to him, knowing that the greatest promise, the love of God, is given to us, and that we are, even now, carriers of God, temples of the Spirit who have a great future. So we pray that we'll never 
Never lose sight of our dignity as Christians, temples of God. Lord, hear us. We pray for all of those who have not entered Christianity, not entered the joy and hope of this relationship with God, this oneness with God, who've never known the purpose and strength and courage it brings and the deep satisfaction. We pray for all of those who do not have God's promise. We pray that their hearts will be opened and we will have courage to speak at the right time. Lord, hear us. We pray also for all those who suffer some form of disunity, disharmony in their lives, that they may do what they can to unity, to find unity, and that God's grace will pour be upon all those seeking that unity. Lord, hear us. And we pray for all of those who are troubled in heart and mind, who are broken within themselves. We pray for those perhaps with uh, mental health problems. We ask God to give them peace. Lord, hear us. And finally, I pause. Please add your own intentions. Speak them now to God. Lord, hear these intentions. Hear the heart that speaks them. Listen to our need, you who live and reign forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Humble spirit of God, I hope we have been accepted by you, the Lord, and we are sacrificing your sight this day, be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash me from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise 
and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Paul our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, 
Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, read your body. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Keep me safe to eternal life. I invite you to make your spiritual communion now. Remember, God lives in you, your temples of the Spirit. He wants to come to you constantly with all sorts of graces. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire you in my soul since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you are already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Do not let me ever be separated from you. Amen. I ask you to continue with the... Um, Novena for Pentecost, which ends, of course, on the Saturday. And then it's Pentecost Sunday. And you will see from the newsletter, which will be published later this week, that there are three things for Pentecost Sunday. Obviously, there's a celebration of the Mass. You may wish to uh, take part in this broadcast Mass or, or another one from a different <clears throat> area. That's your choice. Then, at midday, various members of the parish have uh, put together a Pentecost praise, so that's 12 o'clock noon, uh, that will be broadcasted. The Pentecost praise, which will of course be there up, saved in the YouTube or Facebook channel. And then finally, at the request of the Bishop and all the Bishops of England and Wales, there is a Rosary Crusade at the, um, at the behest of Pope Francis, between five and six o'clock in our diocese. So we're saying the rosary at that time as a sign that we can keep close to God in prayer, keep faith in prayer. We say the rosary between five and six o'clock with the bishop. That's Pentecost Sunday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you 
the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.